super doggy, but we got our we do have our, our notes, folks. We, and, uh, you know, this is you know, this is old cam. And this is not a spring chicken. Today we're going to be talking about an Asian movie called Uh Dai Renge Zetong Tai Dago. In other words, known as Detective D and the Mystery of the Phantom Flame. Hey, you know what like this what that this means? What? I, I can speak Chinese. Did you actually do that in Chinese? Yeah. Oh. Of course it's phonetically spelled. <laughs> No, no, but we, um, but we, we, we went to see a, a we went to, a, we, 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 we generally do 3D movies, mm -hmm. and and we we wanted to pick something out that we actually found halfway in the rest and it's out there in the theaters rather than Shark Swarm or, or you know, well, or Conan the Barbarian in 3D. So well, I, yeah, because most of them didn't interest us, and we did find this movie, um, Detective D and the Mystery of the Phantom Flame, and we looked at the way it was showing and we looked at it and thought, you know what, we bet this is, they're putting it up for the Oscars. Yeah, because so it, we it, to go ahead and take it was in, I think, the L.A. Film Festival. It was in Venice. It's in, it was just in the Toronto and a, another film festival. It's, it's sweeping the Asian film festivals. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's the trick is, it's sweeping in three categories, which basically is sort of a lock for a big, but you know, for a movie like this, which is, Costumes, art direction, and cinematography. Well, because when you look at it, it looks like you know one of those old epics. Yeah, right. It, you know, it's it, very it's grand. Old, and an old-fashioned Chinese thing. Something lots you, of people. Something like you'd see um, um, Jet Li and one of those great big things like Hero or so, or, mm -hmm. or, 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 or Crouching Tiger, Hidden Monty, or whatever they call the movie. <laughs> No, but it was done by the same people that made that one, basically. It was really the Jackie Chan movie, because Sam Hong, who was Jackie Chan's fight choreographer, was the fight choreographer for this movie. So. Well, yeah, you, you notice the, the, what did you call it, the, the style of the jumping and the flying to the air? Yeah, it's all from that movie. But the guy, uh, what was it, the gentleman uh, that created the thing, which was... What, uh, the director? Yeah, I, I don't have the director. Oh yeah, the director. basically, oh, on the, basically the director, Jean, I don't know, it's basically down here. Uh, to Hawk, T S U. Sui, Sui. Sui Hawk. Uh, ooh Hawk, ooh, ooh Hawk. You know, okay. And my, Hark, H A R K. I'm gonna try it this way. You know, my 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 better half is Japanese, not Chinese. She's Chinese, so. It's fun, but no. Mm -hmm. He's known for creating the flying stuff. It's his type of movie. But um, uh, here's the problem that we saw right off the bat was sections of the movie are totally washed out. The, the color is washed yeah, out. Yeah, because we were looking, part of it is we've seen different types of movies. And I, I know, I was looking at it, I thought, what happened to the picture? You're thinking, well, maybe this was intended for a smaller screen. No, we um, found out at the end what's wrong with the picture. Mm -hmm. Definitely found out at the end. What, what, go when you go to a feature film. Always look at the credits at the end of the movie. Because they'll tell you. Because we did see 3D crews. Yeah, 3D crews, folks. So even though we watched the movie in 2D. Yeah, it looks like it was shot with a two-camera 3D system because the largest 3D, uh, largest proliferation of 3D in the world is in China. I think they got 130 television stations that are equipped for it, and they have 10 million sets sold. So. Mm -hmm. They're shooting things in 3D for their audience, but what happens is, is that a lot of people, because actually what we do, we'll 3D to 2D, and uh, you know, but we do a better job of it. Our will 3D, our will 2D to 3D. Everything is back ended in this industry. What they did was they took a, a two camera system and 2D it. It really looks horrible. Some of the scenes are so beautiful. Actually, all of the dark stuff is really magnificent. Well, part of it is it did generally look washed out. Yeah, and yeah. it was washed out because it doesn't translate well from 3D to 2D. Well, you know, a lot of the movies that we've seen that are 3D movies, they were either A, shot in 3D, or they were in 2D converted to 3D. Yeah, it, works. it does look a lot better. I mean, when, um, when you take... Um, it, it, basically, you take a 3D movie and put it to 2D, you lose something in the translation. Mm -hmm. Because, when, like we said, right there, this is a big god awful Panasonic 3D camera we're, we're standing in front of. So, but uh, we'll tell you because we know. Yeah, everybody's seen the camera. Okay, we tell everybody. No, we we know because we work with 3D. We know. We know. We, we we got. I mean, we've got 3D cell phones now. We got. Mm -hmm. We're so heavy in the 3D, but um, so we do know 3D when we see 3D. Also, um, we also see. 
I, I did notice there was an awful lot of uh, zoom shots, mm -hmm. which meant it's a traditional 3D setup. Mm -hmm. So, but um, but uh, the the movie, you know, actually, it basically, um, is Tony Lanka uh, is uh, was basically the most people have ever seen Asian movies know Tony. You know, Tony. See, part of it is all of these actors and actresses were all foreign to me. Yeah, and um, but yeah, I heard they were. It's a it's a movie made in China. But I heard they're quite popular in China. No, they are. Actually, the one that is the least popular is the gentleman, uh, which is Andy Lau, who played Detective D, who has the charisma of a wet noodle. And you know, they said that most of the people agree, like I do. He he he. he Okay, he's supposedly, in my opinion, he's playing Cap. He's playing Lieutenant Columbo at the start with his disheveled look. Then he becomes Sherlock Holmes. Mm -hmm. Then he becomes the girls cat. The girls fall all over him. Mm -hmm. And none of which he has the charisma to carry off. You know, he's a good action person, but he's you know the uh, the one that I really liked was um, was Chow uh, Din. You know who played Pai Dong? This is a blonde-haired guy. Now this guy. Oh, he plays an albino. He plays an albino, but he is a, He's someone you would actually. I would have reversed the roles. I'd have put him because he does have. He, he's got a certain thing about him that he makes you. You know, you're watching him not just because of his blonde hair, but he's actually. Okay, put it this way. He actually figured out what the hell happened in the movie before the movie got really started. Mm -hmm. He figured it all out, and it takes the, it takes another two hours in the movie to come to the conclusion he reached in the first few minutes. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then he, he repeatedly told people throughout the movie what was going on. Pay attention to this the little blonde-haired guy, and you'll find out what's going on in the movie because he tells you continually what's going on. Well, you know, what's different about this is a lot of times when you see movies. And especially when you see Disney movies, there's one thing for certain in a Disney movie. There's a happy ending, the good guys win, the bad guys lose. Okay, no happy <laughs> ending in this one. This one is, a, this is a, you know, this is the, you know, the lesser of two evils. Mm. You know, uh, you know, that, you know, that basically, it, it's, it's got to do somewhat with the history of the first empress of Japan. Whoever did the history book fought, you know, she was the only empress. But to this day, she's the only empress there's ever been. They forget that there was an empress of Japan during the Boxer Rebellion, folks. But that was Japan. This no, China, Japan. China. Empress of China. Okay. I, I, because, like I said, I think about Japan because I, I had this. So, but. Um, and if, if you're going, what, what? So, in an overview, here, here's the, if you want to call it the brief summary. Well, yeah. It's um, on the eve of the the princess's coronation as empress. Um, China's most powerful woman, which is um, yeah. she's played by um, the an Empress Karina Ka Lau. Karina Lau. So, okay. Who I have actually seen in other movies, but she's a mean-looking type little witch type. Well, you but know. she used to be a really attractive, mean-looking witch type, so really young and attractive. So but they have her totally playing the bitch. <laughs> yeah. Well, she you know, with the, that that's that's the whole thing to the deal. She has to be. They she do has to not be want strong her. Female. And uh, and um, it's got to do with the fact too, she shouldn't be an emperor, she should be a regent because she's got a son. The son would automatic the son is too young to become emperor. Mm -hmm. Because if you ever saw the last emperor which won the Academy Award, they had a kid, you know, a little tiny little kid. little kid was the last emperor of of China. And uh, so she basically become an empress because he's not ready. And the uh, the I guess the oldest son of the of the last emperor was basically really too old. So well, and this is predominantly a male film. There's yeah. not a lot of females on there. There are some in her court, but but the females are 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 the central figures, folks. Everything is wrapped around the two women. Mm -hmm. Totally wrapped around the two women, and they're the minor parts. I know, isn't that kind of interesting? Because it's a Chinese movie, and China has this thing about women. But mm -hmm. um, so what happens is right on the eve of her coronation. Although it seems like it was a lot longer than that. Oh God, it just went on. They we went got, on. We want film time. They talk about film time versus actual. Oh, I mean, they first of the eve of her coronation. You know, all these people die in uh, in a uh, sixty-six foot Buddha. 
who have totally out of proportion. A 66 yeah. foot boot is about five stories in size. We're talking a building so tall that you couldn't see the top of it from the ground. You know. <laughs> well, you can tell they use models. I know, but it was totally somebody didn't get the proportions right, folks. Mm -hmm. But um, we, you know, we have the killings there, and then the killing the people burst the into flames. Yeah, but um, you know, and we're just mysterious people die from mysterious flames. They consume people, spontaneous combustion. But um, they then go from that, and that on the eve of the thing, they go to get Detective D, and there are more killings. Then Detective D is brought back that same evening and there is more killings. And then Detective D seduces the girl, but he doesn't seduce the girl after he tears her clothes off of her. You know, it's basically, you've got two versions of that movie, folks. Mm -hmm. There's the movie where you see her without the clothes on and the movie where everything is hidden. So, you know, but, um, uh, but they're doing porno in China now. They got, they got a 3D. They do porno in 3D. Movie. Yeah, 3D porno. Great movie, I understand it is. But, um, Really? With big actresses, there, you know, but uh, uh, but um, there's more killings after he'd done a seduction scene and she's running around half nothing on. Then there are more killings after that. Then the next day, which should be coronation day, happens and there's more killings. And then there's more killings. And then the night happens and then there are more killings. And then the next day, we've got coronation. Actually, as the killings are going on, we have the coronation being prepared. Well, most of these killings are they burst into flames. Yeah. And a lot of it has to do with why are the people bursting into flames? This is, you know, were they poisoned? What happened? This is no, I, I can tell you there's a few amazing. problems in trans. Okay. Remember the movie with, what was it, um, Bill Murray, Lost in Translation? Oh, yeah. Ooh, there's a few things lost in translation. He has, like, fire turtles. Really? Yeah. There were no fire turtles. They're talking about the bloody beetles that's in the thing. Oh, I know they call them fire turtles. Uh, and then they, they, they because they, uh, no, the, the, the dialogue. I mean, okay, I can tell you, okay, when I was younger, I used to do surf and sand pictures, but I also did a few sword and sand pictures. Sword and sand? Sword and sand, you know, like, Sons of Hercules. Da -de -da -de -da 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 da 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 you know, tell Hercules the boss wants to see him. And then they, you know, tell Hercules the boss wants to see him. You know, and they're, they're, you know, the boss, the boss wants you here right now. And I did a few spaghetti western type things too. Mm -hmm. And they would say, you know, the big guy wants, wants you here. There were no such words what they were saying. I listen, I, I can figure out, I can't speak the bloody language, but I can translate fairly well. I'm listening. Oh, that doesn't that know what they were saying. You know, it's just funny. And, you know, there's fire turtles, and then they're talking about beetles. Mm -hmm. No, they were talking about the beetles, and some idiot put fire turtle in because he thought it was Are you better. serious? Yeah. Minor discrepancies. But it was fire, well, fire turtles does sound better. Fire turtles sound better than a beetle. I know. But, um, I mean, you know, but for t it, 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 it sounds it, mysterious. It, it's mysterious. So basically, um, I mean, I, I agree with some of the people that basically, the, that I've got a, we got a review from the Venice Film Festival in this mess. They did like the, they, uh, they said there's enough in there to keep your interest for the fans. Mm -hmm. And there's enough for people that aren't fans to want to see more. But the, the sore point was um, Andy, was Andy Lau, I think it was, wasn't it? The Andy Lau, who was Detective D. They said, which I agree with, he has the charisma of a wet noodle. I think they call, that's kind of similar to Jet Li. Maybe that's the Chinese style of acting. Oh, uh, Jet Li. <laughs> because I know you're such a fan of Jet Li. I don't like Jet Li. You like Jackie Chan. Okay, um, I can tell you that I met somebody that's a vice admiral that met Jet Li. Mm -hmm. And they had a discussion. Ooh. And Jet Li didn't want to go any further with the discussion. Mm -hmm. and so there, you know, Jet Li has, you know, had to do with the fact that he's he really not a very good actor. As an athlete, he is unbelievable. But so is, um, uh, um, you know, the, you know, what was it, the, the French one, the guy from Belgium, the, the, the muscles from Brussels, you know. What's that? Um, what is that guy's name? He was, um, I can't even remember the movie. Oh, he was in Time Cop. But, um, 
shows you, but they both have this, they're both superb athletes, but they couldn't act their way out of a paper bag. Mm -hmm. And you're carrying a movie with an actor that basically can't act. He, he, he's all athletics. It's just, um, I mean, I, most people don't know who Richard Jackal was, but Richard Jackal, uh, you, you know, I worked with him from the 1940s clean until he died in the, uh, in the um, 90s. He was on Bay Watch as one of their officers, but the guy, he was an actor. He was an, a an actor that was an athlete.